All right, Terry Pack, Legends of Gold. Terry Pack, the Pac-Man, as I like to call you. How's it going today, Terry? Uh, it's going good, man. Going real good. Uh, good day, 85 degrees and uh, nice weather. Sunny and 85 out there in Beardsford, South Dakota, huh? Yeah, it doesn't get like that very often. Humidity is low, so I like it. So, okay, Terry, you guys got a huge event coming up here at uh, the new Legends of Gold facility. They're just outside of Beersford, South Dakota. Um, what is the event that's coming up in uh, Beersford at Legends of Gold? Um, <clears throat> so what we're doing is we're putting together uh, what's called the Midwest Duels. <clears throat> it's going to have a, a, a group of elementary, middle school, high school, and women's teams um, all competing uh, over, over a six-day period. So how many uh, teams have you had committed so far, and what did, you, did you have to cap it, Terry? Uh, we did. We actually was going to do the high school team and stop it at uh, 16, but we had such great response from, like, powerhouse teams that we expanded it to 24. So and then our girls are at, nine, or at 10, our middle school's at 9, our elementary's at 8. Uh, so it's going to be a, a lot of great wrestling over five or six days. Freestyle, Greco, and folk, Terry? Yes, all three. So you guys are offering all three. Man, you guys got a heck of a product out there. I've been following the uh, – and I remember when you told me, Terry, about the uh, new facility that you were going to put in. I was like, they got a huge you – you already had three mats in a room, about three and a half mats in a room in that yep. your original mat room out there at Legends of Gold in South Dakota. Um, now you have – do you have, like – you have the capacity to go, like, eight, ten? What, what can you do? Well, like, right now, right now we're running eight full-time. So we have six in the one, two in the other end in dual mat forms. Uh, but if we did like the, like the roller tournaments and that kind of stuff where they use those 30s, we could literally get in, we could run 16 in one, four, and we actually run 20 mats at once if we downsize the mats. But uh, we're using all Olympic size mats right now. So with Olympic size mats between both facilities, you can do 10? We, we're running eight. Eight, you can do eight, okay. That, if you just want wall-to-wall -wall mats in your new facility, how many could you fit if you were like, no spectators, all mat space? Could you do eight? Yeah, oh, easy, easy eight. We can, we're, we're, probably closer, we're probably closer to 12. You could do 12. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's, a, it's, 100, it's 160 by 140 uh, of just space. So, oh wow. So that's not counting like the bathrooms and that kind of stuff. You know, we went 70 on each side of the poles. So, so, but if you went mat to mat, we do 10 with zero issues at all. What's crazy is, you know, when we had the, the Burroughs camp, man, I was just, you just shared a thing with me when I got out the plane with my neck, yeah. my neck fellow on. And the lineup was crazy. It was Jordan Oliver. It was Daringer. It was uh, uh, Burroughs, Thilke. Yeah. Your lineup that one year, was that 2017 maybe? Yeah. It was crazy. 2018 yes. maybe? Oh, my gosh. Think about the amount of kids you could now have at the thing because you had over, well over 100 kids then. Now you have the ability to get hundreds, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, we've been running camps since April 18th because um, we're the only place to open in the country. And uh, so we've been running camps since April 18th, and we've – we sold out. We've sold out every single week right now, all the way until uh, July fifteenth. So what's crazy with that is when you say we've been running camps, and um, you guys like you know we're in COVID nineteen, where we have some states that are moving backwards now as far as their phases. You know, Texas has had some spikes. South Dakota's never shut down. You guys, you have been open. I know uh, Utah's been open. I believe Wyoming's been open. A lot of these states. Western states, large rural states, didn't shut down. You guys never shut down out at Legends of Gold, right? No, we shut down for 17 days, and that was just to uh, to try to bring into what the city compliance was. Um, so we shut down, we fumigated everything, and you know, for us, what makes it easy is we we are a public, we are not a public facility, so we don't have public foot traffic. So you know, we can literally limit our traffic to nobody but kids if we want to. And that's what we did. We, we shut it down, parents dropped them off. Uh, they weren't allowed in the buildings. Um, you know, we had a huge protocol because obviously Sanford Health is one of our uh, 
one of our big supporters and sponsors. So, you know, we've worked with their protocols and, and line them in our protocols. And, it, you know, knock, knock on wood, uh, you know, we're six and a half weeks in and haven't had a single issue. You know, we went to Sanford. Um, remember what the, the, what was it? Sanford Power? Is that where we yeah. went? Yeah. Yep. That is an incredible facility that your athletes, you have resident athletes out there and you have camp athletes, you have commuters, you have all different types of athletes as far as the level of where they stay. But going to that facility is incredible. And that's a hospital system too, right, Terry? Yeah, absolutely. So Sanford Health is like one of the bigger hospital um, systems in the entire Midwest. <clears throat> so uh, that's, just a, that's just a small piece of, of what they do. So it's been amazing. Yeah, and, and, and being able to have them in on the ground floor with you, you know, during this COVID-19 um, shutdown, you guys only shut down 17 days, which, you know, considering there are still, like Jeff Jordan's not running camps until after July 4th. Um, I know the Burnett's are not running camps until after, until, you know, July. Um, so I know that a lot of the big camp systems, I don't know what Perler's doing, but I know Perler that. just popped open a, a, a couple weeks ago, and I believe Pinnacle's first week is this week coming up right now. Yeah, so, so consider those clubs and those places have been closed down since March. You right. guys closed down for under three weeks, right, two and a half weeks, and right. you've, been, you've been keep going and, and, and getting the job done, and now the demand, like we've talked, the demand's, just, demands through the roof, right? Like right. people, people want to get out, they want to wrestle, and then – you're in an area where you don't have a hot spot. You don't have a ton of infections right. in South Dakota. So you've actually been commended by the governor of South Dakota. Is that correct, Terry? Well, um, we, our city worked really, really well with us. So we were able to go to the city, talk with them, and then the governor, and then they did a whole piece through South Dakota Public Broadcasting where they came in and wrote a whole article about how we were able to stay open um, and how we did it and commended us on – the process of what we did and how we handled it to be able to stay open during the entire pandemic. That, that, that's incredible, man. You know, kudos to you guys and, and your, your staff, you know, and it's, it's your family. That's the craziest thing about this. Right. Most people, when they shut down, they got to go home and be with their families. You were quarantined with athletes or, I mean, not even really quarantined, but you were, you were with, you know, kids who live there. How many kids are you boarding right now, Terry? At uh, right now we're boarding 14. So that's crazy. You guys were bigger than the normal crowd, bigger than the normal family, obviously, times three of right. the normal family. And, and you do that with your family, your daughter, Sydney, right? Your yep. wife, your dogs. Um, yep. your, son, your son is obviously in Fargo. Yep. Um, you know, uh, Cody, but like it's a family there, Legends of Gold. And it just blows my mind that you guys are able to keep those kids there and, and be able to, you know, because I keep seeing, I kept seeing content coming out of you guys on the Facebook. And I was like, man, they're really, they're still, they're still running and gunning there. And I, yeah, it was, it was awesome to see. Talk to me about uh, the, the, this Ironman, Ironman Midwest Nationals. Is that the t name of it, Terry? Midwest Duels, yeah. Midwest Duels, okay. <clears throat> tell me about the Midwest Duels, Ironman Midwest Duels at Legends of Golden. Tell me where, where, you, where you got the idea from and who you're working with on it. Yeah, Nick Simmons and I uh, from Michigan were talking and we're like, man, we got to do something. There's no Fargo. So we put together a plan about seven weeks before, before they announced that Fargo was canceled. And we're like, hey, look, if, if they're not going to have Fargo, we're open. We have a private facility. We know that we can host an event here. Let's have an event if they cancel Fargo. So the day that USA Wrestling announced that they were canceling Fargo, within 10 minutes um, after the announcement, we were – posting our flyers and stuff because they were already done in anticipation if that happened. Uh, so Nick and I just talked and worked together and we're like, let's do something that uh, allows these kids to wrestle. And, you know, we thought we'd have a really big uh, push with the elementary and middle school. And we thought it would be less for the high school and for the girls. And it's been just the opposite. And our girls teams filled ridiculously fast and our high school has got, I mean, some of the best guys in the country. It's crazy. So, you know, you got the world team members coming out there. You got Pan Am medalists. You got, you were telling me some of the, 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 uh, the guys and the girls who are coming out there. And this is a, an absolute hammer event, man. I was, I'm really impressed with what you and the, the East Lansing Strangler have been able to put together 
and, and you did it quick, relatively quick in, in the sense that, you know, Fargo, Fargo's got the, I mean, Terry, you probably wrestled at, at the Unidome or, yep. in Fargo or, or, yeah. Africa, or, you know what I mean? Like when it was Fargo, it was, right. it went to the Unidome. It was, it was all, you know, it was in different places in the Midwest, yep. in Nebraska, I want to say it was in Iowa. Yeah. That thing's got staying power for 40 plus years. Right. right. And to, to get an event off the ground in a month and a half, essentially, crazy, right? It, it, it's been it, it's been really tough. I mean, the, the logistics of it um, are slightly easier because we have our own facility. Um, the the, the non logistic piece that's really causing us the biggest grief is obviously um, we have to we have to for twenty four teams to fit in that building uh, with eight mats. It sounds great, but it's a lot of people. So even though the venue is going to be smaller than a normal 24, uh, than, than a normal 24 team tournament, and when you throw in the girls in the in the elementary, we're we're looking at 50 teams over those days. So our biggest logistical piece is trying to make sure that the spectators are still in a in a fan friendly environment because we still have to appear some some uh, some rules with the county and the city to make sure that we don't. Uh, put too many people in the building. So we are limiting spectators and that's becoming our biggest part is trying to figure out the 24 team logistic and figure out how to get the spectator numbers in to make it compliant. Well, yeah, I mean, you have so many people. If you look at the Fargo Dome every year, it, it seems empty, but it's a football arena, right? Right, Where you can get 30, I don't even know, 20, 30,000 fans in there, but it looks right. empty. But you still got thousands of fans. That's what's wild about that, and, and so many of them are parents. Um, what can we expect to see as far as the format of it, Terry? What's the format of uh, of the Midwest duels? Yeah, um, for for the elementary and middle school, um, it, it'll be a little easier. It's going to do four man round robin pools or four four to five man round robin pools. Pull them out, pull them together, um, and and they'll all wrestle freestyle, folk style, and uh, Greco uh, over two days. So the middle school and elementary are going to get a lot of matches. Uh, the girls are only wrestling freestyle, and they'll be the same format. Uh, two five-person pools, and then we'll pull out the winners and light bracket them out. Uh, so everybody's going to get a minimum of uh, four to five matches. And the logistics for the, for the men are a little different. Uh, so we'll take those 24 teams, we're going to put them in a 32-man bracket, then what we're going to do is as they lose out, they will re-bracket back. So in the first round, they'll, they'll re-bracket back into two, uh, two pools. And when you lose second round, you'll re-bracket into an eight-man bracket. We lose third round, you'll break it, you'll bracket out into a four-man. And then in the semifinals and finals, obviously, that's just going to be as one is. So in all of it's in a dual format, correct, Terry? Yes, 100%. Everything's in dual format. So that's the cr crazy thing about that. Someone can go and wrestle in eight matches. They can go 0 and 8. Right. Do a lot of hard learning, right? Yeah. yeah but absolutely. they're getting the matches, whether they're, you know, whereas – think about that, Terry. You're going to Fargo, North Dakota, and you do a week or two-week training camp. It's all the travel out, the tournament, mm -hmm. and you can go two and out. Right. And, and, you know, and once we started talking to, like, Cormier – and strange, and then we signed Team Alaska, um, and we saw all these teams coming in from a, from a long distance. We wanted to give them, we wanted to give them minimum three matches to four matches in every style, no matter how their team did. So you know, when you mention the teams that you're going to bring in, when you when you say Cormier, Gilroy, right? Right. They're going to send a team from California. Yeah, man. So they're coming in, and obviously we put Steve Strange's team out yesterday from California. And, man, there, there's a ton of California State medalists on, uh, on Strange's team. And then on uh, Cormier's team, what we were looking at, they just sent us a preliminary of their hammers. Um, and I believe there was, there was five of them that were nationally ranked just with those guys. And then, obviously, we had in Matt Sins, the former Orange Crush, Crescent Valley that – has won three state titles in a row in Oregon. Um, they've got a couple world team members on there. Uh, Seabolt's team is loaded. Uh, Minnesota's out of Iowa. team, yeah, out of, out of Iowa. Uh, they have a world team member at 13. Um, 
from Minnesota. Dominguez's team is Dominguez is only going to do freestyle and Greco. And man, they are, I think they have seven D1 commits um, in their rosters. Nebraska? Yep. Dominguez out of Nebraska. Okay. Uh, you know, and you look at this, man, you're getting me really excited about it, but that, that's crazy to me that Cormier would be, and I don't know if either, he's going to come himself because he's in the middle of a fight camp there to train right, for right. the greatest heavyweight fight in UFC history. So that's right. that Daniel Cormier is just, he's a pretty impressive guy. If you look at everything he does, right. That's coaches. You know, he's a head high school wrestling coach. He's a professional athlete. Um, you know, he combined the heavyweight and the 205. He's one of the only guys that will hold two divisions. So, like, he's an impressive guy. He's a nice guy, too. I like him. I'm guessing you might probably send someone like Deron Wynn or someone like that with the team. We don't know, right, obviously. Right. Yeah, we don't know. But that's, that's my guess. Uh, most of that contact was, has been with Nick and him. And, um, and just because, obviously, he is in the fight camp. So, getting a hold of him is pretty limited right now. Um, but we have his initial lineup. And, Man, it's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, on the the the, uh, the girls' side, we talk about the women, right? You, you were telling me some of the, the individuals who are going to be there on the women's side of the, of the of the duel, which is the final day of competition. It's you're saving the best for last, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, it's like um, a lot of people. <clears throat> a lot of people don't know this about me is I actually had a women's team in Yosho that we started right after we won our first national title. And so when people talk about women's wrestling, how new it is, no, it's not. I was doing women's wrestling in 2000. And so was Missouri Valley. And so were a lot of people. And I've always had a sweet spot because, you know, I've seen Mary Kelly and, and, and so many of those, Randy Miller, all those girls wrestled on our team. And for us to, uh, to be able to, to see women's wrestling grow from when we started way back then. In fact, our, car, our college dropped it. Because our college president said they, women should be wrestling in jello. And we got a new we got a new president. And that new president, basically, her first job was to drop women's wrestling. Um, so for me, this is a this is a all the way around to uh, to show the growth of women's wrestling and what it's doing and how important it was to not only saving our sport, but growing our sport. And, uh, and I love it. And, you know, Bill Sullivan out of Nevada uh, has helped put together three full teams. And, man, I'm telling you, he's got eight world team members on one team. And Scott Colbert out of uh, Missouri, uh, the Minnesota guys, we've had so many people that are instrumental to wanting to see the girls' division here be the focal point. So that's how we decided to end it all. I like it, man. I like it. Bill Sullivan, is that Billy's dad? Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, Billy was a one of your he was your first actual resident athlete there at Legends of Gold, wasn't he? That is correct. Him and uh and then Kate Moore came in and then yep. obviously Rice and all the group we have now. Um Joel Adams, obviously. Um so you know, we've been super fortunate to have guys on, you know, out of that IDA program making world teams, uh making Pan Am teams, uh placing in worlds. So we've been super fortunate that that program is, uh, is done as well as it is. You know, and I look at you guys having these, you know, you're going to start being able to have mega events and, you know, the logistics, this is going to be a good, you know, kind of testing ground, a litmus yes. test, if you will, for how well can you manage a 24-team event. What's well, going to be well over 50 teams through right. all the events, right, to the yeah. six days, like a wrestling festival, essentially. But – it's just, uh, yeah, I'm super excited, man, because I, I remember coming out there, geez, oh, Pete's four, five years ago, I want to say, Terry, four or five years ago, and, and seeing what you guys built in the, in the middle of uh, the cornfields and the soybean fields there in uh, Beersford, South Dakota, man. But this event, yeah, it's going to be a killer event. When's the event start, and what does it start with? We know on the July 22nd, it ends with the women's event, freestyle women's, right? right. When yep, does so it start? What does it start with? Yeah, we started on the 17th and 18th with the middle school and elementary. And then uh, the high school folk style uh, will be the, let's see, 17, 18, be the 19th, followed by uh, freestyle on the 20th, 21st with Greco, and then the girls end on the 22nd. Okay. 
So you guys are doing effectively what Fargo does now. You're putting folk on the front, freestyle, yeah. Greco. It used to be Greco first out in Fargo, right. then freestyle. Now they're going freestyle Greco, right? Right, right. And, and we wanted the people to get the extra mat time in, so that's why we had it folk style. Yeah, that, they're going to be able to chance – they're going to have an opportunity to get a ton of matches. It's going to be long days, though, Terry. You know that. Well, and, and I think that's going to be – I mean, I think that's the key that people – you know, the girls and the middle school and elementary won't have the, the, the kind of long days that the, uh, that the folk style men are going to have. Um, and we're going to start in the morning, and, and we – right now we're hoping to have finals each of those nights at 6 o'clock. Oh, wow. But, you know – that's a lot of matches to run through on eight mats. So uh, we'll just have to, have to play it by ear, you know? And, and if anything goes longer, it's gonna be the folk style because it takes so much time. But uh, we anticipate the freestyle and Greco to go, uh, you know, right as planned, the finals at six. Wow, man, you're always, I like it. You're always trying to run the front edge of stuff. You know, it's like you talk about Neo Show, uh, having women's wrestling when you were there. and this legends of gold thing and this, this uh, boarding training model, like you guys are doing this effectively becoming a lower level, a, a younger age RTC is, I didn't know if it could work, man. And I, I, I remember coming out there being like, is this going to work? Is this, is this guy going to make this fly? And man, you've done everything and that, and, and this new facility, I'm super stoked for the new facility. That's what I really want to see. But Terry, you know, moving forward, let's say you knock it out of the park. You know, there's obviously going to be challenges, right? Yeah. Let's say you knock it out of the park. What's the closest arena you guys could go to if you wanted to move this event to an arena? Well, we, we move right to Sioux Falls um, into one of the Sanford facilities, whether it be the Pentagon, um, the Fieldhouse, or the Premier Center, one of the three. Okay. And, and Sanford actually owns all three of those. So, obviously, um, they're our major sponsor, and we try to help them as much as we can. Where did we go for all the testing? Is that the field house we went to? That was to? in the field house, yep. And that, <laughs> that's two 100-yard fields, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you could do a massive event there. Uh, ultimately, Terry, you know, it could go there. I know that that might not be the thought right now, but, like, you answered that question pretty easily, so that I know that's had to be a thought in your mind, right? It is. Right? It is. I love it. I love hearing it. Um, right now, what's the cutoff date for people for t want to bring teams to it, Terry? We're, right now, we're well, sitting at, what are we, June 26th? Yeah, well, obviously, we, we, we're taking no more men's teams, no more women's teams. Um, we, have, we have the ability to add one more elementary team and one more uh, middle school team. So we will still take those pretty much up till the week before as long as we have it open and they can make logistically work to get here. Okay. So, yeah, and that's logistics and travel there. Um, actually, that that airport's amazing, by the way. Oh, that yeah, airport's yeah, yeah. amazing. It's really it's awesome. so nice. Remember, you got me the hotel room, and you're like, "Listen, yeah. you're gonna be checked in, sitting at the gate from your room in under five <laughs> minutes." And I was like, "That's just not possible." I walked down a stairwell. My room was the end room. Yeah. I walked down a stairwell, got my ticket, and was literally at the gate in under seven minutes. I was like, "He's he's lying," and yeah, it, it's nuts. It's not, so, yeah, and then, and then you guys are 40, 45 minutes from there, right? Uh, yeah, we're, 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 and, and that's a long one. Usually, it's, you, if you drive, you gotta remember, the speed limit's 80. Yeah. South Dakota. So, you can do it in about 33 minutes if, you're, if, if you don't hit any traffic, but if not, you're right around 40. I must remind people, it's South Dakota, there's not a ton of traffic. You can, <laughs> yeah, you sure. can do the 80, I know that, and it, yeah, but, um. So I'm sitting out here and I, I talking to you, you know, and I had to show you, you know, that I, I bought some land here. Right. And uh, you inspired me to do as such. I'm actually sitting at the edge of my garage. There's the four wheeler I showed you earlier. I'm doing some work. The boys and I are doing work. We're throwing cinder blocks, Blake breaking them up. I got a low spot down in the, uh, there's like a ravine back here oh. and cross it. I've been had to break up. I've got some uh, pavers and stuff, but, that facility out there, the, 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 the initial acreage is what, like, really caught me. You know, you guys are out there, and it's an old Lutheran home, right? That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So, so, and it's like an elementary school, an old elementary school, and, right. it, and then you had the, the main one, and then you had the dance studio in the back there. 
Now you've yeah. got that massive facility out front, right? Right. That is what really like kind of inspired me to, you know, get out here and buy property. And I tell you that all the time, right? I know you do. I do. <laughs> man. It's like, it's awesome. Taking the side by side out and you know, that you got the four wheelers, the one year Jordan Oliver rolled it. <laughs> no socks, no shoes on, just socks. It was like, but like, I, you know, I wanted my kids raised in an environment like that because we were in the city of Kent and I wanted to get out here. But yeah, that when people come out here, come out there, they, I think they think that, you know, like people get one impression of South Dakota and it's even like I'm saying, ah, oh, there's no traffic. It's this, it's that. It's rural, but it's really nice out there, Terry. Yeah, man, I, I, I love it. You know, um, coming from California, people are like, oh, it's going to be such a change of pace. But <clears throat> where I lived at in California was not really a change of pace. I lived in the mountains. So uh, <clears throat> I love it here. The people are great. It's a, it's a supportive environment. Um, obviously, wrestling is not as big in South Dakota as it is like in an Iowa and Minnesota. But, uh, you know, we're here to help it grow. And your numbers with the boarding have grown, right? They've yes. Grown, they've grown every year. And right. we're, in, you know, Terry, these are uncertain times. And people, you know, they want their families near them. And they're worried about not having seasons. Or, ah, we're not going to have a season next year. People, you guys are probably going to be open for business. You never shut down. And you're right. probably going to have a high school season, which your guys can wrestle in a lot of the events when they have the events, right? Well, they cannot wrestle in anything in South Dakota because the South Dakota Athletic Association says it's an unfair advantage for kids to live here and train here. Now, they can live one mile away and drive every single day. But if they live on campus, it's considered an unfair advantage. Okay. But um, do you but have people who do, do that? Right. What we do is we bring them in. We hit as many big tournaments as we can through the year and throughout the year. And, you know, there are places that allow clubs in, like Powerade and stuff like that. Um, so there's definitely a niche market for that. But I think the difference for us is if, if the pandemic continues and teams are, and states are doing what they're talking about doing, here's the one nice thing. Even if the city and the state closed down, our facility would close to the public, but it doesn't close to on-site staff and residents because we own the property. So we could literally, I could see us with, if, if the world closed, I could see us with 30 to 40 high school athletes training year round, working with still division one coaches and division one athletes and senior level athletes um, and retaining all the residents here and never having to leave. That's that. Yeah. That, that blows my mind because now and the next question is what are you going to do to keep my kid safe and why should I trust you with my kid? Right. You know, you're going to get that. Well, why would I send my kid out there and they're going to be interacting with all these other guys. And you know, I don't know if you have, you don't have any girl uh, uh, resident athletes yet. Do you? We do not. No. Okay. So they're going to be with that, but that could change, right, Terry? If you change, can you change the door? Right, right. We're actually looking at starting a women's residency program in 2021. Okay, so that the could change, right? That could change. You could see a massive swell in growth. But what what do you think that you do differently to keep people safe and keep them quote unquote quarantined away from other people right. and to keep them away from illness, right? Yeah, Environment, I mean, which is very hard to do. I don't know how you do that, but how do you do it? Well, I mean, I think that I think the I think the nice, easy thing for us is you know where we're at. We're not in town. We're we're we don't we're located at forty acres in the middle of nowhere. Um, our athletes can be locked down and not leave campus. We have our own cafeteria, we have our own training, we have our own. Uh, now we just completed our completely new uh, physical therapy facility, so um, we can pretty much do every single thing in house with never leaving. And I think that's the difference. And the second difference is nobody else in the United States stayed open during a pandemic but us. And not only did we do it, knock on wood, for six weeks of sold out 80 plus, but every single person has left here safe. They've left sound. And we've made it through the, through the initial surge of the pandemic. And have now watered to the backside where things are reopening and we've been able to get everybody safe and sound and keep everybody on campus. So 
I think that's the difference of what you're going to see with colleges and high schools. Those people go home. And then they have access to other people. When they live here, they don't have access to anybody but the resident athletes up there on campus because we have no outside foot traffic. Yeah, that that when you bring when you, when you state it to me like that, that really makes sense. They're only going to be exposed to the same thirty or forty people, whereas other people are are exposed to hundreds, if not thousands, of people when they leave a large high school or a medium sized high school. And yeah. you know, obviously, our big target of who we want to keep safe are people who are elderly, 60, right. 55, 60 and older, underlying conditions, right? The, those are the people who are, if you look, what, 50,000 of the deaths of the 120,000, Terry, uh, nursing home deaths, right? Uh, elderly deaths, right? So that, that is, you know, that's the advantage you have over someone who's going to go see their grandparents every night, see their parents every night if they have older parents. So, you know, when you put it to me like that, it really makes a lot of sense how you're able to keep, you have a much more controlled environment. And, and that's why we're able to stay open. Uh, you know, like I said, the city worked great with us to, uh, to, to maintain groups for those 30 days. And, um, you know, and we still, like, even though we had 80 people on campus last week, we separate their dorms. So they're only 20 to a wing and they're only 20 to a group where earlier in the stages before we, before the county released our numbers, we were 10 people to a group, 10 people to a dorm. So we we're operating at about 30% capacity. Wow. <laughs> wow. Have you had, have you built a new dorm yet, Terry, out there? Cause I know that you- uh, We have not, we just remodeled all the, all the ones that we had. Okay. And what's the dance studio? Have you done anything with that yet? Yeah, we turned that into a, a parent's lounge. Um, it's super nice. We just put the deck on it last week and, and that'll be open for parents um and coaches uh next well next month when we when we open for the uh for the event will you know like you're saying that right there's going to be like a you're going to have to shift people from buildings right you're going to have to right. do that that's going to be part of it where people want to go they can go to the, the parent lounge right they can go right. and the parent lounge is right behind your house actually right so they're going to be able to go there they're going to be able to come into the cafeteria which we completely remodeled and expanded out um, so we can seat about a hundred, we can seat 98 people in the cafeteria now at a time. Wow. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> so I mean, and then, then obviously the other building, you know, you could put seven, 800 in. And, uh, so, I mean, between everything, I, I think that it's going to be fine. I just think it's going to be a little tight, uh, for, for the amount of teams we have, um, it'll be a little tighter than normal. It might run a little longer. I think everybody we've talked to is just so happy to be wrestling and to have the opportunity to wrestle that everybody's willing to put up with a little bit of something. Could someone set up, if they wanted to drive an RV, would there be somewhere, where, could someone do that? Yeah, absolutely. We have, the, we have those new spots available at the back. We're actually adding a campground in for next year with five spots. We'll have five new, we'll have five full-time spots starting next year for the campground. The, you're always thinking, man. <laughs> I, I like, just in this conversation, I thought, I was like, yeah, he could do that. He could, he could do a, a campground and put power and sewer to it if you wanted yep. to, right? Yep. You, you, already had, you were already years ahead of me on that, Terry. <laughs> I like that. That's why you're running the business and I'm just sitting here in the garage uh, breaking, up, breaking stones up today. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've done a lot of that myself over the last month. So. Well, that's crazy what I see. Like, you do do a lot of the – you roll your sleeves up on a lot of it. Man, your, your wife – your wife's a junkyard dog. Yeah, bro. Lisa, she, pa Lisa packs the real deal, bro. Uh, she's amazing, man. I mean, uh, she loved the, these kids. Love her like they're their own mom because they miss their mom. You know, not not all the kids miss their dads because their dads are usually the guys driving them crazy when they're home. Um, but they miss their moms. And for you know, you gotta think about it. We had we had a, we had a third grade resident at one point when it started. There's now sixth grade. We've had it for three three years. And he misses his mom sometimes, and, and Lisa, gets, Lisa takes that role. And, you know, she cooks all their meals. She cleans. She travels. She does everything. I mean, she is definitely uh, the glue that holds a lot of it together. Remember I rolled up on her that one day and, like, watched her work? It was, like, kind of creepy. Yeah. I'm like, look who's grinding. And it was, like, 6 a.m., and she was making everybody's meal. She's like, get out of here. Oh, but, yeah. Like, she, that's her deal, awesome. man. 
that's her deal. She doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to be bothered. She doesn't want attention. She yeah. wants to, she wants to make her, she wants to do her job, provide for the kids, help them out. And yeah. How's Sydney? She's doing good, man. Tonight's her graduation uh, party. So, so she's, uh, she's ready to graduate. And, uh, doesn't quite seem like that should be there yet, but it's yeah. happening. I remember when she first got her driver's license. Right. At 14. Yes. And I, I think you offered, you're like, ah, hey, she can take you to the airport. And I'm like, she, she's 14, dude. What are you talking about? No, you're nuts. I love, but no, it's like legal. Yeah. Yeah. You can drive at 14 with no restrictions. <laughs> what the original intent was because it's such a big area and you have so many kids whose families own farms. Yep. They, drive kid parents to pick up implements and farm machine. Right. That was like the original intent, but she had her license at 14. I tell the story in classes. I'm like, this guy had a 14 year old daughter who could drive 80 mile an hour on a freeway. I still don't trust her driving 80 miles an hour at 18. So it's so crazy. Um, so what's next between here and the, 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 the duels, the, iron, the, the Midwest duels, what's what, how many camps and who's coming in? Well, we have, like, we've been doing a lot of our own camps this year. Um, so this week coming up, um, we'll have Nick McGeehan. He uh, wrestled at North Dakota State. Chisholm Fink is the coach in Augustana. So he'll be in. Um, Cody will be in to work with the youth kids because he can't do anything with the high school kids because of the dead period, obviously. Um, so, and then myself, Linares, um, We'll all be running groups this week. And then next week, um, we're right back to the same thing. It'll just be Anthony and I running all those groups. So you're, you're sticking with your staff for now. Are you able to do that big, that big banger camp, that big – that well, Kyle we, Snyder, Jordan Oliver, Ringer? We, we, we're not this year. And the, and, the, and the simple fact of the matter is, is – we, every camp we've done is called a lock-in camp. So they have to answer a, a screening protocol. And then when they come here, they're locked in. The parents aren't allowed in the dorms. Um, and, and, the, and the kids can't leave. So we just are not able to do it because we had such a large commuter base to bring in those kind of names. Um, and they're, let's face it, the cost associated with those guys is a lot. Yeah. You know, so uh, we've, we've not done any of those camps. All the camps we're doing is you drop them off, they stay, they don't leave, they're locked in. Uh, our staff is here, and that's how it works for those five days to ten days that they're here. Well, it has to work like that, uh, Terry, because the amount of contact, and it, we don't even know, largely to a large degree, we don't even know the transmission, uh, the rate of transmission. We know that it's more airborne, but we don't know about we don't know as much about surface transmission. It's just and you, as far as using the same facilities and stuff, you guys got a big cleaning job and disinfecting job in front of you, and it's just just a lot of work on you guys, man. It's definitely been uh, a, a way longer process because we have to sanitize nightly to stay open and keep things going. We have to sanitize and fumigate nightly, and then we ozone every ten days. Um, where we shut down everything for four days at a time. We ozone every single building. Wow. Uh, so what we're doing is doing five and ten day camps, shutting down for three days, ozoning everything, deep cleaning everything, and then reopening again right afterwards. It's an ozone machine, isn't it? You got to do like multiple machines in each building? Yeah, it, because our buildings are so big, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, each dorm is 7,500 square feet. Uh, the school building's 15,000, you know, the new wrestling room is, you know, 32,000 square feet. So, you know, you start throwing all that together and it's obviously a lot of space. When I come out this next time, next time I make it out, I'm going to do a wide angle, like the whole wide angle, almost like fisheye tour of it. Cause I can't get everything in the frame. I'm going to do a wide angle to give people an idea just how much space and how vast it is what you have, Terry. Cause it's incredible to me, dude. It blows my mind. And like, I remember when Cliff Fretwell was the one who he like, he was like, you got to see this place. 
Yeah, and, and if Cliff saw it now, he'd really be, you know, Cliff came when we didn't even have our new wrestling room in. We're still going to the high school then. So crazy. Yeah, and he was like, I remember people are like calling it like the feel the dreams for wrestling. That was the, that was the big, and it like really resonated with me when I was like, because right. then I got out there, I was like, this is heaven. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what the room calls it to this day is the feel the, feel the dreams for wrestling, so – Wow. So crazy, man. I love it. I love talking that with you. I know you got Sydney's party tonight. Is there anything else we missed talking about the event coming up here uh, starting on July 18th? Wait, July 16th, right? 17th. 17th through the 22nd. You're going to have elementary. You're going to have a a high school division. You're going to have a uh, women's high school division, right? Right. And then are post grads allowed? By the way, I, I guess I yeah, should. they are, and and I think that's here, here was our thing going into this, and this is the key I stuck on when Nick and I were talking is all these kids that were seniors missed the best opportunities that they like. You know, they missed every regional, they missed Fargo. You know, a lot of these kids either in their careers um, or gain great. Uh, you know, gain a scholarship at Fargo. So we're sitting there going, all these seniors miss the biggest, best tournament of their careers. And, and we wanted them to have that experience. And that's why we decided to let, uh, let graduating seniors in because we just felt that we wanted them to end their career with something with their team and with people that have supported them throughout their career. Think about this. The Ohio kids missed their Ohio State tournament this year. They didn't have an Ohio right. State tournament. I know. They started their season a week later, and it, like, it, ru- it ruined the year, you know? Right. I got a nephew who won the district and had a ton of momentum going into the state tournament. Yep. In Oak Harbor, and he didn't get to wrestle in the state tournament. I think he would have had a pretty good chance of winning. Right. Junior, he's got another year, but, nope. you know, he's a situation where that might be the type of guy – if Ohio yeah. doesn't have wrestling, he's a he's a legend's a gold guy. Right. Or or has to travel out west somewhere and go to high school. Yep. And Not it. It, it sucks, man. And and we felt for those kids. And you know, and we're like, okay, let's let's see if we can make this work. And and obviously, um, you know, I think I think the numbers are good, the competition's good, but for me, more than anything, is the normalcy of these kids being able to end their careers with their teammates and people that, uh, that, that they've grown up with um, and teammates they've known um, to be able to end it one last time with those guys, we think is, uh, is going to be the real key to, to making it great for these people. Awesome, man. I'm glad you guys are putting it together. I'm glad that there's still going to be an opportunity for, for kids all across the country to, to get out to Beersford, South Dakota for the, you know, Midwest national duels and, get that top flight competition, even the post-grads, you know, the, the graduated seniors who, you know, maybe there's still guys that don't know where they're going to go yet. Hey, where right. is Sydney going, by the way? Is she going to South Dakota State? Uh, she's going she's gonna to hang back for a year because all the pandemic craziness. So she's just going to work, take some online classes, and then uh, make the decision the following year with all this. Because obviously there's some schools and states um, that are talking about not reopening and reopening, reopening on a limited basis. So we've told her that we thought the best rate, the best route would be just to go take some online classes. And, you know, and in all honesty, Zeb, if I was a high school coach right now, I would be telling my high school seniors to gray shirt. I tell them to find a place to train, find a training center, take six hours or less because do you want to be this next group of guys? Dude, people are still crazy with this pandemic stuff. How would you like to be a high school kid? Dude, look how many seniors, Spencer Lee, these people have lost their careers. So, like, we're telling people, if I'm a high school guy, I'm telling people, take six hours, go gray shirt, train. If they have opens, which you're talking about not having, go to those opens, see how this pandemic's going to play out. Then go to school and have five years. Yeah. That's what high school coaches should be telling their kids. Yep. I was talking to Jim Andersey today, and, and Andersey was like, what happens if we don't have a season next year? Are they going to ha- cut half the teams in D1, right? Like, 
You right. don't even know. Nobody, nobody knows anything, Terry. Nobody knows anything. And if your clock already started, yep, you're, fresh, you're burning years. You're right. burning years. And not to mention, we don't know who's going to have teams anymore. And it's a mess, man. It's a right. mess. But, and I get it. I get the health end of it. I know you really get the health end of it. We, we, we get it. We get it. Right. I'm not going to like sit here and minimize right. elderly people dying. I'm not going to do it. I'm it's not what I'm doing. But, but at the same time, it, the clock's running for, for these kids. Now the clock right. is running. Right. And we understand the health concerns. I'm not minimizing any of that. Right. Um, right. You know, and you guys, I think a Tyson, a Tyson factory out there had an outbreak in, in South Dakota and one in North, uh, Northwest Iowa, I want to say, right? Yeah, I mean, if it would not have been for Smithfield and Sioux Falls popping with over 2,000 cases, you know, we would have been, we would have been way up low end. And we are anyway. Um, there's less than 800 active cases in the entire state of South Dakota right now. Wow. So it's, it's a safe place. To go and be comparatively to Southern California, you know, New York, right? I mean, right. Florida, Texas now, I mean, because you know, those, those are, they have a high population base. They have the yeah. most people, the places I just said, Chicago, right? I mean, right. Houston, I mean, I mean, it doesn't, it's population density, Terry, and you guys don't have that. I agree. Um, will you be able to facilitate? Last question. I know we got to get going here. You got Sydney's party coming up. You got sessions running. Right. Can you facilitate a gray shirt athlete? We are actually planning on, um, depending on what happens um, with states, we're actually planning on rolling out uh, a gray shirt athletic program that would come, that would travel to college opens. And we're actually looking at instituting uh, a bigger IDA program that would be able to house up to 30 students from around the country um, if their programs are shut down in the high schools to allow them to train. And if need be, funnel right from there if the pandemic lasts into a green shirt year, then into a college program. So, so that answer is yes. <laughs> you won't be able to facilitate those athletes. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. I appreciate you jumping on with me today and talking. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Talking duels coming up here on July 17th at Legends Gold, ending on July 22nd, a festival of wrestling and a 50-plus uh, teams out there in Beersford, South Dakota, and tons of matches for kids, freestyle Greco and folk style. The girls will just be wrestling freestyle, right? That's correct. So – Awesome. Everybody else will be wrestling all three styles. And wow, what an opportunity, Terry. You got anything else for me before we jump off here? No, man. Just want to say thanks for what you do for the sport. And obviously, uh, we've been friends for a long time. And um, the friendships of wrestling uh, will long live uh, a lot of things. And pandemic or not, not being able to see everybody that I, that I know with wrestling with you guys, uh, want to know I appreciate you and what you do. Awesome, man. Hang around a little bit here. I want to talk to you real quick after I cut this uh, recording, and we'll talk. Thanks for the time, Terry Pack, Legends of Gold. Always great talking to you, man, all right? All right, man. Take care, brother.